When the topic of bone health gets high on the agenda, everybody's attention seems to turn to calcium. And as plant-based people, we are quick to point out all the wonderful sources of plant-based calcium. But in this video, I want to invite you to think about this question a little bit more broadly. But we can't avoid talking about calcium, so let's first review the targets. How much calcium are we supposed to get, not just for good health, but for all the other functions that calcium supports in our bodies? In North America, the target is ridiculously high, and I would say perhaps even inflated at 1,000 milligram per day. That's a lot of calcium and even more for certain demographics. In the UK, the target is 700 milligram per day, and in China, it's 800. In at least two studies coming out of China, we've seen that those with a dietary intake of calcium in the range of 250 milligrams per day to about 700, so basically half or less than half the North American targets, those people did not have a significantly higher risk of bone fracture. What's up with that? But at the same time, we know that in some very respectable studies, there have been different findings, especially about those eating a healthy plant-based diet or vegetarians or vegans. We've seen a higher risk of fracture in the Epic Oxford study findings and in the Adventist Health Study too, as well as in the UK women's cohort. So that concerns me as someone who eats a fully plant-based diet. Well, first of all, don't panic. We have to put that risk in context. Let's take the UK women's cohort study for starters. Yes, in that study, we did observe that among people with vegetarian or vegan diet, there was a slightly elevated risk of hip fractures. We are looking at 10 extra cases per thousand people over the course of 22 years. However, at the same time, the risk for cancer, cardiovascular disease, and type 2 diabetes was cut in half. So going down from about 100 and two, I think, cases per thousand to about 50 cases per thousand. So yes, hip fractures suck. They're not great, but cancer sucks more. So if I was to make a choice there, I would probably risk it a little bit on the bone health aspect to be more protective against things like cancer. However, I don't have to do a choice there. There are lots of practical behaviors I can put in place to reduce my risk of bone fractures as well while continuing to eat a 100% plant-based diet. Because seriously, bone health is important and we cannot be smug about it. Fractures seriously impede mobility and independence in our supposedly golden years, and I personally definitely want to avoid them. Some of the explanation in the American and British studies about bone health and the greater risk for those eating a vegan diet was that indeed vegans were consuming slightly lower amounts of calcium compared to the meat eaters. But let's think again about those studies out of China because they were not seeing the same results at all. And here I have to admit, I'm going to go into a little bit of speculation, but there's a few things we know about lifestyle in China, especially historically, which would have had an impact on the older people that were part of those studies. And one thing is for sure is that car use is a lot less even today, but historically, certainly, definitely much less than in North America and in the UK as well. And so people would have been using active transportation a lot more, using their bodies, just being more active. Also in the Chinese dietary habits, we're looking at eating a lot more greens at practically every meal. I would also guess that the Chinese people in those studies historically would have been spending more time outside, though that's a little bit of speculation. But if that's the case, that would have also helped with their vitamin D status. At the same time, consuming far less meat than the North American average. Not only that, but Asians in general consume a lot more soy products, 10 to 40 times more than North Americans. Within those soy products, we would find tofu. Soybeans in general are a great source of calcium, and tofu products are often calcium set, which would also increase the calcium, but not from dairy sources. Because dairy, again, until recently, was not consumed very broadly in China, and that would not be a big part of the equation there. 
Because of all this, I'm personally reluctant to put calcium as the be all and end all of bone health. I think for my personal decisions in life and my lifestyle choices, it's better for me to put emphasis on the other behaviors that support bone health first, and also, of course, consider calcium and the dietary inputs, because yes, our bodies are made from what we eat. So I'm not saying it's not important, but there's other behaviors that we need to pay attention to. So this is not medical advice. This is what I choose to do. And I encourage you to think about it and make your own decisions accordingly. First of all, for me, that means putting a lot of energy on bone building activities. I lift weights and do strength trainings three times per week. I do high impact exercise, primarily running at least twice per week. And in general, I seek opportunities to lift heavy stuff like carrying my own groceries whenever I can. I also make sure to take a vitamin D supplement because I live in the Northern Hemisphere and I do not spend enough time outside to trust that I'm getting enough sun exposure to really create all the vitamin D that I need. And by taking that supplement, it helps me know that the calcium I do end up eating has a much better chance of being turned into strong bone tissue. I also ensure to take a vitamin B12 supplement because B12 is not present in plants really anymore, and I do not want to risk it with trusting the fortification of various foods. So I take a B12 supplement. It costs hardly anything. It takes just like 10 seconds once a week and it gives me a lot of peace of mind. B12 is important for building strong bones and keeping them healthy. So those are the two supplements, vitamin D and vitamin B12 that I make sure to take. And then I think about dietary calcium, the stuff I eat. Roughly, if I had to set a target, I would say that I'm aiming for about 700 milligrams per day in full knowledge that there are probably days where I get just a little bit over 500 and I don't freak out about it. First of all, I front load calcium with my breakfast. I like to have more or less the same breakfast every day. And for me, that involves chia seeds, oats, flax, berries, and some kind of nut, walnuts or pumpkin seeds, for example, sometimes hemp seeds with a little bit of blackstrap molasses. I have that breakfast every day. And on its own, it brings me about 450 to 550 milligrams of calcium, including about half of that coming from the fortified soy milk that I use. Sometimes I use homemade soy milk. It depends. So in that case, it would bring more like 300 milligrams of calcium. So right off the start of my day, I know I have a very strong basis in calcium and also tons of other nutrients from the chia seeds and the oats and the berries and everything else. So making sure to have a healthy breakfast that covers those bases is fantastic insurance. I also don't drink coffee. Coffee is a calcium thief. That is not the reason why I avoid it. It just doesn't sit with me anymore. But if you do consume coffee, you probably want to make sure to separate the time when you consume calcium rich foods from your coffee consumption. Having front loaded most of my calcium with my breakfast before nine in the morning, all I have to do next is make sure that I'm eating some beans or bean products, especially tofu. I love tofu. And greens at my other two meals. I preferably choose cruciferous green vegetables, things like spinach, um, Swiss chard, beet greens that are non-cruciferous tend to have high oxalates, which reduce the absorption of calcium. So though they technically have a lot of calcium in them, it doesn't convert into a lot of calcium inside of our bodies. Whereas cruciferous vegetables like kale and broccoli just to name two, are much more um, effective sources of dietary calcium for us. Pretty much once a day, I also have some kind of tofu. And my preference, not because of dietary reasons, but because I think it tastes better, is for calcium set tofu. I love smoked tofu that I eat quite often in my salad for lunch. And this has for half a package, which would be oh, about the, not even 100 grams, 200 milligrams of calcium. And I would probably in a lunch salad have about one third of a package. So 100 to 150 milligrams of calcium. My current favorite is sunrise tofu, the firm style. 
if you're eating a medium tofu, it probably has less calcium, even if it's calcium set. In this firm case here, we are looking at 100 milligrams of calcium per one sixth of a package. Again, for me in a meal will be about a quarter. So 120 to 150 milligrams of calcium. And you just need, if you're not sure, to look at the ingredients. The first ingredient will always be water followed by soybeans. And then you will see the different coagulating agents used in your tofu. And calcium sulfate should be the first one after the soybeans. And that will tell you that there's a lot of calcium in there. Of course, you can also look at the nutritional facts on the packaging. Also, make sure to check out my video about tofu that has a lot more information about the different kinds of tofu. It's delicious. It's a great part of my diet almost every day. Again, not just because of the calcium, but because it's really yummy. Also, I will have usually one snack of nuts in the day if you choose almonds as a calcium-rich source. For even just a small handful, 25 grams, that's not a lot of almonds, you get 67 milligrams of calcium. So that's a nice way to top things up and also, of course, to further diversify your diet. The reality though is that even primarily predominantly plant-based people often don't eat beans at every meal and especially not greens at every meal. So if that's you, you may want to heed the advice that I've heard from a number of plant-based health experts that suggests having a glass or two of fortified plant milk as part of your everyday consumption. And that will bring you 200 to 300 milligrams of calcium per glass. Again, check the package and the ingredients. Some kinds of plant milk do not have added calcium to them, so make sure that yours does. And that way it will pad your calcium and make sure that you are getting enough. Personally, I'm not a milk drinker, but as I was mentioning, I do put half a cup to one cup of soy milk that's usually fortified in my breakfast. So I get a little bit of a boost that way. And if I add a full cup of this here, which is soy milk, it's a common brand in Canada, it adds 300 milligrams of calcium per cup. This is my husband's favorite, it's almond milk, and it also has 300 milligrams of calcium per cup. That is a substantial boost to your everyday dietary intake of calcium. So starting the day with that at some point will definitely help you get above the 500 and into the 700 and even eight, 900 milligrams of calcium per day. If you are also eating beans, greens, and nuts and seeds throughout the day. So make no mistake, being a healthy vegan does not mean that we can just shrug off the whole calcium question because we're superheroes or something. There is still a particular importance for us to pay attention to bone health and make sure that we are getting enough dietary calcium every day. To keep our bones strong, we need to do resistance exercise, high impact exercise, and make sure to supplement vitamin D and vitamin B12 as well. I'm also aware that being underweight is a risk factor for fractures. So having a BMI, however imperfect that measure is, but having a BMI that is over 21 is probably a safe spot to be to prevent fractures. Having taken care of those fundamentals, then I turn to dietary calcium. I have that front-loaded calcium-rich breakfast. Then I eat beans at every meal, as well as greens, especially those low oxalate, cruciferous kinds of greens like broccoli and kale. And I snack on nuts at some point during the day to further top up my calcium. Also choosing calcium set tofu, not just because it's really better in my opinion, but also because it brings in a substantial dose of calcium. Finally, for extra insurance, yeah, you can drink a glass of plant milk throughout the day. That will definitely send you, if you're following all of the other suggestions I've made, into the upper range of the desirable calcium consumption, even on a plant-based diet that contains no animal products whatsoever. I would love to know what you do to protect your bones and to make them stronger every day as you get older. So put it in the comments below. I look forward to reading from you and to seeing you again soon in the Vegan Family Kitchen.